Today I'm going to talk about inverse Laplace transforms. And I'm going to do that the proper way. I'm going to calculate an inverse Laplace transform using contour integration and the residue theorem. So let's start by the definition of the Laplace transform. Let's call it Fs. It's the Laplace transform of a function ft. And that's an integral between 0 and infinity minus st, ft, d, t. This is the Laplace transform. So you have a function ft and you transfer it to the s domain. So something with an s comes out and we call it fs. There's also an inverse Laplace transform, which you can do, of course. And that's our interest for today. And that gives you back your ft. And that's a limit of t to infinity um, plus gamma, sorry, minus it and gamma plus it e to the st fs ds. Yeah? So this is part of a contour, as we will later see. It's an integral in the complex uh, plane of this function, and that will give you back ft. Okay, the function we're going to be interested in today is the following one. fs equals omega s plus alpha squared plus omega squared. Okay, that's the function we are going to transfer back to the time domain. If we do it properly, we will get the following function as a reference, alpha t sine omega t, and this holds if t is bigger than zero. Okay, so it will be an exponent to the minus alpha t times times sine omega t. So that will be the result if we do an inverse transform. <clears throat> Let's see if we can actually get that out using uh, the residue theorem. For reference, the residue theorem calculates the contour of a complex function. Let's call it f, let's make it fs immediately. s is a complex number, fs ds, and that's equal to 2 pi i times the sum of the residues of fs. Okay, so that's the residue theorem. <clears throat> the residues are calculated as follows. The residues of fs in s equals s0, for instance, equals 1 and minus 1 factorial. Limit s to s0, d n minus 1, so that's the n minus 1th derivative, s minus s0 times fs. d s to the n minus 1. Okay, so that's the residue we calculate. And then we plug that in here and we have a contour here. So let's start calculating the residues of this particular function here, f s, plus this piece over here, what you need to do the inverse Laplace transform. So if we have those residues, we have at least the right hand side of the equation and then we can think about the left hand side. So let's make a picture first on this particular function, see where the, uh, the poles are in the system. We will have, for reference, and we'll need this later, we will have the gamma minus it and gamma plus it contour over here, where gamma is some positive number, there's zero here. Then we have the two poles over here, and this pole is at minus alpha plus iw, right? And there is another pole here at minus alpha minus iw. That's easy to see because you can rewrite out this equation a little bit into the following form. S plus alpha plus i omega s plus alpha minus i omega, okay? That's immediately follows from here. 
So these are the poles we need to be looking at and we're immediately gonna place the e to the power st there also because that's what we need for the inverse uh, Laplace transform. So now we have our two poles here and what we're gonna do is that t will go to infinity and it will circle back and we'll come back here. Okay, so we have a full contour now that we can use with the contour integration here. One part which is the inverse Laplace transform part and then this part hopefully will go away. That will go to zero and we will see that later. Okay, and then we can use the residue theorem to actually calculate it. So now let's fill out the residues to see where we're at based on this fs function. So we get for the residues 2 pi i there's a residue in s equals minus alpha minus i omega and there's a residue of fs of course but in s equals alpha minus alpha plus i omega okay and here you also have a residue of fs of course so if you work that out we get 2 pi i the residue of fs which is this function here okay using this particular form and since these these are single uh, single residues not multipoles there's just a single pole here single pole there one pole here one pole there no doubles n equals one so you don't have to dif differentiate you only have to do s minus s zero in the uh, nominate, uh, nominator and then that falls away in the denominator. So what you're left with is for this particular one, e to the i minus alpha minus i omega times t for the top. Then we go to the bottom and we will see that if it's minus alpha minus i omega, it will be minus two i omega for the result. And for the other one, we have an e minus alpha plus i omega times t okay divided by 2 i omega okay now we can simplify this we can make this into 2 pi i all the omegas disappear we're left with a minus alpha t over here because this one and this one can be taken out and in the brackets we get e to the i omega t over 2i okay that's this piece minus i minus i omega t over 2i okay and that's the sign so what we will end up with is 2 pi i e minus alpha t times sine omega t we don't know if this holds for t is smaller or bigger than zero but we will see later what the restrictions are but this is what we have on the right hand side okay On the left hand side we have the contour integral this whole piece and that's built up of two pieces there's a piece that is exactly what we need that's this piece and now i see that uh, the inverse laplace transform what i missed is a 1 over 2 pi i that needs to be included also so that needs to be included here in front of here it's just a multiplication factor okay so what we will see here is an integral with that limit t to infinity gamma minus i t gamma plus i t e to the power s t times omega and then over s plus alpha plus i omega s plus alpha minus i omega ds so that's the first integral which is essentially 2 pi i times the inverse Laplace transform of fs okay that's what this really is this term here plus and now we get that circle so we get the circle same function here s plus alpha plus i omega s plus alpha minus minus i omega 
ds, okay? And that is equal to two pi i minus alpha t sine omega t, okay? Now this circle has the following form. It's gamma plus r i e phi, where phi is bigger than pi over two and smaller than three pi over two, okay? If you have a circle with its center here, gamma, right? The angles, the phi angles of that circle will be pi over two because it starts at zero here. It goes up to pi over two to three pi over two, okay? And you can also write this as plus r cosine phi plus i r sine phi, okay? And that's what we will fill out in here. And we're only interested in the top part because that's where the exponent is. If that converges, everything converges, right? So we need to analyze if r goes to infinity, if this integral actually converges, and we write this out as e to the power gamma plus r cosine plus i r sine times t times omega divided by s plus alpha and s I'm going to leave you can fill it out too there's not going to be a difference you can do that yourself and see that it indeed doesn't matter for convergence and now let's take a look at this we already said that this was negative because phi varies from pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 this will always be negative okay r will go to positive infinity the radius so this will go to negative infinity so t needs to be positive in order for this to go to negative infinity if t would be negative it would go to positive infinity this would blow up so t needs to be bigger than zero as a consequence so now we found that for this integral to work and go to zero indeed t needs to be bigger than zero okay because then this goes to negative infinity if r goes to infinity and therefore that integral will at that point be zero okay so now we know that this is zero and we're only left with this and i'm going to write that out here so what we have left is 2 pi i the inverse Fourier transform of fs right which is this whole piece here according to the definition <coughs> definition over here with the 1 over 2 pi i okay and this needs to be equal to 2 pi i times e minus alpha t sine omega t yeah that needs to be equal to that and it holds if t is bigger than zero otherwise it doesn't hold okay so that gives us the Laplace inverse Laplace transform of the function fs that we defined over here this function so the function excluding the e power, right? Because that was in the definition of the inverse. So this function, if you inverse Laplace transform this, you will get e to the minus alpha t sine omega t. And that holds for t bigger than zero. And you could say, okay, I'm going to include a step function, ut. And this ut step function is essentially a function that is one if t is bigger than zero and it's zero if t is smaller than zero, okay? So that takes care of that constraint here. And you will get this result. And that's it. Yeah, so now you have this wonderful result. Calculate it as it should be calculated, not from a table. Only inverse a Laplace transform of this function. So now you can calculate your own inverse Laplace transforms and yeah, to me that's pretty satisfying and uh, very nice. So I think this is a great place to stop. If you like this video, please subscribe and please like and I'll see you in the next.